Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Today, I wanna to find out how much a $50,000 garage actually costs. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, the answer is simple, it's $50,000. Well, in our case, our builder was responsible for the main structure, siding, roof, uh, in-floor heat, concrete, and the garage door. Everything after that, in terms of finishing the garage, we acted as the general contractor and subbed out all of the finishing touches for the garage. So my goal for this video is to try to give you guys some kind of factor that you can use and apply in budgeting for your own garages. So if you're doing a $20,000 garage, I wanna give you a certain percentage that you can kind of use to uh, come up with what your finishing costs of that building might be. You can use it on 20,000, 50,000, 80,000, $100,000 building and it'll give you just kind of a rough idea of once the shell of the building is up, what you might be looking at in terms of finishing costs. Now, before we start diving into the numbers, I did just wanna give one more big shout out to our builders, Koblenz Builders. Uh, my mom, who's a very talented artist, hi mom, uh, she drew up the sketches for what this garage would look like once it was attached to the house so that we could get an idea of what it was all gonna look like. We wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna look stupid, that it was going to flow together. And you know, one thing that neighbor Doug told me from the beginning is the entire objective of an addition is to make it look like it's not an addition, make it look like it was there from day one. And that's what we came up with, with the sketches that my mom put together. And once we had that drawn out and we liked the looks of it, we handed that piece of paper over to Koblenz and they literally took a piece of paper and built this 30 by 46 structure, tied it into our house, and it looks identical. I'm just completely blown away. They don't, they don't do any CAD drawings or anything like that. They're just extremely skilled carpenters. This whole project from start to finish was, I wanna say, pretty much without a hitch. I don't, I don't remember any big catastrophes that we had throughout the whole build. And the other thing that I wanted to mention that I don't think I've mentioned before is that they, those guys, they clean up after themselves every single day, which might not sound like a big deal, but it really is because every day that, you know, they'd make some progress on the garage, you know, either neighbor Doug would stop over and want to check in to see how it was coming along, or my parents would want to stop over and see how it was coming along. And it was nice to have a nice, neat, tidy job site to walk through and people are actually looking at the building instead of looking at the pieces of scrap two by fours or whatever's laying around on the ground. So just a very professional crew. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that I, I gave them some credit here because they did an awesome job. I also wanna mention that there's a lot of variables at play when it comes to building a garage. The biggest one is obviously the cost of materials. We built this garage in the summer of 2022. During this time, if you're watching this video years later, uh, prices were through the roof, inflation was through the roof, and it seems like now when at the time of this recording in the fall of 2022, prices have come back down significantly. So that's just something to factor in if you're watching this video years down the road when hopefully things have settled back out. The other thing that may be different with our garage build than what you guys are doing is we attached our garage to our house. We have a mud room in between the garage and the house. Uh, and so there was a lot of extra costs in tying into the house. If you were to do a 30 by 46 garage and it was just a freestanding building, uh, a lot of your costs would be a lot less expensive. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I have kept every single receipt that was related to the garage throughout the entire construction process. We started in April of 2022 and we finished sometime around the beginning of September of 2022. Uh, so right off the bat, we had our building permit. That was $527. And then after that, we had our contract with Koblenz Builders. I already covered what that contract covered, the main structure, in-floor heat, concrete, siding, roof, all of that stuff. And that was $49,444 or $45. Uh, after that, after we got the contract signed, um, we had to bring in a ton of fill dirt for the site prep. And this is when we first started going over budget because I think in our contract for the build, they included one load of fill. Well, we needed about eight loads of fill to prep the site and get everything all leveled up. So our price for fill dirt was about $2,700 over and above what was in our contract. Um, the next thing, and this would be a, probably another cost that you may not have if you are building a freestanding building, 
and that is relocating services. So where we attached our garage to our house, we had our electric meter and our gas meter sitting there. So both of those had to be moved, rerouted, and then put back on the side of the new garage. And so for our electric service to be relocated was $1,219. And for our gas meter to be relocated was a thousand dollars another thing you need to leave some additional room in your budget for is adding extras once the project gets started because once you start to see how things are going you may say oh i don't like that i want to change this or i want to add that and we've got a couple of instances of things that we added mid build uh, one of them being dormers uh, our like i said our building is 30 by 46 and that is a long roof it's a 46 foot long roof and if we didn't do anything to it, it would have looked pretty plain and boring and you know, almost looked like we added a double wide to our house. And uh, we wanted to do something to add a little bit more character to that roof. So we added dormers over top of the front and back porches. And those were $2,000 a piece. And that might sound like a lot just to add some character to the roof line, but it really does make the whole uh, addition just blend in with the house a lot better and, and adds a lot more character. And that was actually pretty cheap considering the amount of time involved in adding those. So that really slowed the guys down when it came to um, adding the metal roof on top because they had a whole bunch of compound angles they had to do. Uh, it, it added a lot of places for water penetration to potentially get in. So they had to do a really good job of sealing all of that up. And we haven't had any leaks yet, so I know they did a good job. So $4,000 for the additional dormers on there um, might sound like a lot, but when you actually saw how much time it took them and how much it slowed them down, I think it was money well spent and uh, we definitely didn't overpay in any regards for that. Another thing that we added to jazz up the roof line a little bit was the cupola to the top of the roof. It just, again, gives a little bit more character, uh, makes everything look a little bit more elegant. And we have windows in that cupola. We have a hanging light in there that's a dusk to dawn light. So every night our cupola is lit up like a lighthouse and it looks pretty cool and uh, that was uh, $1,200. And again, money well spent in my opinion, it just looks really cool. Uh, next thing is uh, Koblenz would have included doors and windows in our build, uh, but they're contractor grade doors and windows and we actually went out and bought our own doors and windows. We wanted a, a really fancy front door um, and we wanted uh, prairie grid style windows, you know, with the grids on the outside and they, they didn't offer that. So they took it out of the contract and then we went out and bought our own. Uh, so we had $2,341 in purchasing our own doors and windows. And we also have a big glass slider going out to the back patio. Um, the next thing, this is also uh, part of the extras is once we got started with the garage, we realized that our floor to the garage was going to be about three feet lower than where it was going to step into the house. And uh, we didn't really like having the idea of having a three steps going up into the house. So we actually raised the mudroom up about 18 inches. And what that caused us to have to do is pour the floor in two separate days, which added some expense. So even though Koblenz had built into the contract, the concrete, they didn't have factored in the concrete guys having to come back two separate days and pour two separate pads. So we poured the mudroom one day and then the garage another day. And so we paid the additional bill for having the concrete guys come back two separate days. And we also added some concrete steps in on the patio and in the garage. Um, and we also decided to have them seal the garage floor after they did it. So that was an additional cost. Uh, what else? Oh, and we put in um, some really nice channel floor drains in the concrete as well. And so our additional cost to the concrete guys was $1,825. Uh, we, did, we did have some plumbing supplies, even though we don't really have uh, drains for like a slop sink or anything in the garage. Uh, we do have the floor drains that we had to plumb. Um, we have... I mentioned we had to move all of our, our gas. So we had some uh, gas plumbing that we had to do inside the basement of the house. And uh, we have a water line out in the garage so that we can hook up a garden hose and things like that. I highly recommend if you guys are gonna be doing a garage to have some kind of hose bib on the inside of the garage. It's really nice because our garage will be heated. So we can leave that up all year round. I can hose out the inside of the garage in the middle of winter if we get a whole bunch of salt and snow on the garage floor 
or if we get a nice January day where it's 40 degrees outside, I can actually go outside. The hose is already hooked up and ready to go. I don't have to disassemble it in the winter time, uh, worrying about pipes freezing. And I can go out and you know pressure wash the equipment or something in January because that time of the year, everything is covered in mud all the time. Um, the next thing in what we subbed out was the electrical. And again, with inflation and the price of everything today, uh, this kind of blew me off my feet when I went back and tallied up all of the receipts. We have $1,300 of wire in that garage. I couldn't believe that. And then electrical outlets, boxes, switches, lights, conduit. We had to put a new panel box in for the new meter. Uh, that was $2,025. Uh, so we have about $3,300 just in electrical material in that new garage. I don't know, to me, I, I don't deal with electrical. That sounded like a lot. Uh, if you guys who are more well-versed in electrical, let me know if you guys think that's high or low. Uh, the next thing is we insulated the garage and that was just a flat fee. We put in R21 and that was something we subbed out. We put in R21 in the walls and we had R38 blown in in the ceiling. And that was $2,750 installed, out the door, done. That was, it was just, they showed up one day, did it, done, and that was it. So that was nice. Um, then we did drywall in the mudroom and we did liner panel in the garage. So the drywall was $267 in materials. The liner panel, uh, Koblenz Builders actually came back and installed that. And that was $3,900 for the liner panel for the ceiling and the walls. And again, I think that was money well spent. It just gives the inside of the garage such a clean looking finish. It really brightens that space up and just makes it look like it's done correctly to the finish line. Now I mentioned before that Koblenz Builders did the majority of the carpentry work of the building, but we acted as a general contractor and we have a family friend who is a retired electrician. Um, he actually used to work for the school district here and while I was in high school, or actually maybe middle school, they built a brand new football stadium and when he worked at the school district, he was in charge of all of the wiring and the plumbing for the entire football stadium. So, uh, you know, he's done some, some pretty big jobs and has a lot of experience. And because he's retired, um, he works for, you know, pretty cheap. He's, he doesn't have a lot of overhead. He doesn't work for a big company. He's just a guy that does it for fun in his spare time to keep him busy. And uh, so our total cost to him, he did all of our electrical, all of our plumbing. And uh, we had about almost $5,000 to him, which if I had paid somebody who was a part of a big electric business or plumbing business or something like that, I, I don't really even want to know what we would have paid uh, in labor for all of that. Um, after that, we get down to some smaller stuff. Uh, doorbell, $46 for the front door. Um, we did have our, uh, you know, the, the concrete guys, they do the in-floor heat. They run the tubing in the in-floor heat. However, you still need an HVAC specialist to come out and actually hook up the tubing and put in a manifold in the basement and tie everything into your boiler that you use to heat your house. And so the bill for the HVAC tech to come out and actually hook everything up, test, pressure test it, and make sure everything's working properly was $3,124. And then we get down to deadbolts, doorknobs, handles. That was 225 bucks. We put a ceiling fan out on the back porch overlooking the pond, that was $95. Uh, and so that brings us to a total cost for our $50,000 garage to $83,861.91. And that means that our total finishing cost over and above the garage was $33,860.91. So if you take that $33,860 and divide it by the original contract price of the $50,000 garage, we get our finishing cost factor of 68%. So that's the number that I wanted to get to with this video was to give you guys something that you could multiply by whatever your garage is gonna be to give you an idea what your full all-in cost would be so that you don't get you know three quarters of the way done and then you run out of budget and can't get to the finish line. So you know, for example, if you had a $20,000 garage, you know, let's say you're gonna just do a, a 24 by 24 freestanding building, it might only be 20 grand and you were gonna finish it out. Uh, with a, a finishing factor of 1.68, uh, you'd be at $33,600. If you had a $40,000 garage, 
your all-in cost might be $67,200. And for an $80,000 garage, it might be $134,400. Um, whatever number you wanna use, you could just multiply by 1.68, and that'll give you a rough idea of what you would wanna have budgeted for finishing the building if your contract only covers the general structure. Uh, now, like I said, we attached it to our house. We have some living space in there. So we finished this garage out really nicely. Like I said, we did premium uh, doors and windows. Um, we have heat, we have insulation, we did the liner panel. So you guys can go ahead and tweak this little spreadsheet here any which way you want and remove some items. Um, but I think this does give you a pretty good all encompassing list of you know things that you would need to finish out the inside of the garage. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed the entire garage build series uh, and you enjoyed this summary of what our total cost was, give us a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll hope to see you again on the next one. Uh, the garage, even though, you know, as far as contractors and stuff is concerned, we're pretty much wrapped up. We still have a little bit of finishing stuff that we're going to do ourselves inside the mudroom. I mentioned before we want to add some shoe benches and coat racks. And we're gonna build all that ourselves because that's something I can handle and it sounds like it'll actually be a lot of fun instead of you know trying to bang something out and get it done. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.